A historic property brings Kendall to Gabe's small Colorado town, but can anything he says convince her to stay? Find out in Carla Loriano's new book, Provenance. Kendall Green is an interior designer with an uncanny ability to discover the provenance of any piece. Despite all her hard work, her business is struggling. But an unexpected inheritance might offer a timely solution. A grandmother she never knew left Kendall property in a tiny Colorado town. Young Mayor Gabe Brandt is desperate to save his small town of Jasper Lake from a developer who wants to turn it into a summer resort. When he learns that one of the town's most prominent former citizens left her property to her granddaughter, Gabe is sure he can enlist Kendall to his cause. Until Gabe realizes she knows nothing of her own history. In order to save his beloved town, Gabe must first help Kendall unravel the truth of her own provenance. And Kendall must learn that in order to embrace the future, sometimes you have to start with the past. Provenance by Carla Loriano is available wherever books or ebooks are sold. Or visit Tyndale.com. That's T Y N D A L E.com for more information about this Christian contemporary romance. Provenance by Carla Loriano is available now. Welcome to Story Chats at Inspire Romance. I'm Elizabeth Madry and I'm here with my two co hosts. I'm Narelle Atkins. I'm Valerie Comer. Lindy Peterson is back with us today. And we are going to be talking about books in urban settings. So thank you for being back with us, Lindy. What thank was you. exciting to you about urban settings? Why did you want to come? Well, I think half of my books I've written are urban set. Um, I love the vibe. I love the, just the whole feel of it. The, um, I like the opportunity it takes to or, or it makes to, rather to create like a community inside a big big place like a like a big city and um I don't know there's just so many different things you could do with these urban settings and you can narrow it down to something like Lincoln Park in Chicago or you can have Chicago or mm -hmm. there's just a lot of opportunities and um when I went back and looked I said oh well over half my books are written like that so yeah okay <laughs> That sounds legit. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. All right. So when we talk about urban settings, I think maybe we probably should start off by defining some terms. What does urban mean to each of you guys? Because I suspect that it means something different to everybody. Um, so, you know, if you've got like a population number in mind or some way to quantify what urban means to you, I, I thought it would be fun to sort of start start there. <laughs> so that we understand what we're talking about, because I think there's a range that we could look at. Um, Lindy, do you want to go first? Um, well, yeah, to me, like I said earlier, it's like a vibe. So um, my one of my books was in a suburb of Atlanta, but it was still like an urban feel. So to me, it's not necessarily the size of the city. I think it's, um, that could be it, of course, too, but... Um, just um, the way people move about or walk into coffee shops mm -hmm. or, you know, um, hanging out with their friends here and there. And of course they can do that in small towns too, but maybe it's the time of the day, they do a little bit later or something. I don't know, just um, there's, there's different aspects of it. Sure. Oh, that's great. Narelle, what about you? Well, I think, I don't, so being in Australia, we have two, our two largest cities are Sydney and Melbourne who have a population, if they're not 5 million, they're pretty close to 5 million. So that's what I think of as a large city. And then I live in Canberra. So when I moved here, we would have been in the mid 300,000s in terms of population. And I think we're heading for the mid 400s now. So definitely I consider Canberra a city, although sometimes it is like a big country town for a whole bunch of different reasons because you can everyone's like one degree of separation from each other it sometimes feels like even though the population is larger um but I'd say a hundred thousand would probably be a number if something's bigger than a hundred thousand it probably has the health services the it might have a university or a college campus and those things that kind of define that bigger um, population and the culture as well I think the difference between the city and country is you've, you're more likely to have opera and theatre and um, art galleries and museums and all that kind of stuff that um, you find in a big city that you may not necessarily find um, the range of in a country town and it's definitely as Lindy said the vibe each city has a slightly different vibe to it as well it's not the same 
No, for sure. Depending on what you are. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Valerie, what about you? I, I think it's kind of interesting, Narelle, that you said um, that Australia's biggest cities are around 5 million because that's the population of the entire province of British Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't look up how many people live in Vancouver, but obviously less than 5 million. Um, but um, yeah, I, I think this, it's going to be kind of interesting to see. I, I would start maybe at about 100,000 with a, with a city. And some of the things that I look for or that tell me that it's urban would be a, a fast pace, a nightlife, there'd be high rises and, and skyscrapers, big buildings like that, often known for uh, traffic congestion, uh, complaints about rush hour traffic <laughs> that <laughs> lingers for like three hours on either side of rush hour. Um, and definitely they're, they're going to have some mass transportation stuff, whether it's subways or or a good bus system or whatever. So those are some things I think that that um, that really kind of speak to that for me. Cool. Um, I, I tend to, I think probably fall on the five, five million and up population idea. I was looking, I did Google quickly. Um, the DC metro area, which is a unique sort of urban setting because it's not like all city. It's like got DC, which isn't even city because it's not, it's not got the tall buildings because nothing's allowed to be taller than the Washington Monument. So um, all the buildings are shorter <laughs> than that. They're not, there's no, you know, there's no Empire State Building um, in Washington, DC. Um, but, you know, then you've got outside, you've got the Arlington area and the Boston area, you've got all these, you've got Crystal City, little air, suburb, well, city areas that surround DC, and then the massive suburban sprawl that goes out. Um, and if you do the, the DC metro area, which is parts of Maryland, DC, and Virginia, and apparently the cool kids are calling it the DMV these days, which is always the Department of Motor Vehicles to me, so <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> For sure. That's, that's not, I'm not a cool kid, apparently, but, um, <laughs> but it's about 6 million. So to me, that's a good size for city. Um, but I know there are smaller cities, like I used to travel to Indianapolis, um, frequently for work, and it's definitely still got that city vibe, like Lindy talks about, um, but it's much smaller. Um, and it's very distinct between city, like downtown, and then like, the suburbs I would never consider part of Indianapolis necessarily because it's got such a well-defined city section whereas like the DC area the whole thing is the city because I mean it takes 30 minutes to get to the grocery store because there's traffic because that's just what it is <laughs> so um but the vibe I definitely agree I think that was a good call Lindy is the vibe maybe speaks more than than the number of people <laughs> Um, cool. All right. Yeah. So do you think when you're using an urban setting or if you're choosing an urban setting, um, do you have to use an existing city or can you make one up like small towns, we make up small towns, you know, like we're a chef in a kitchen coming up with our signature dish, right? I mean, small towns. Like we're, like we're dealing, we like we're dealing out playing cards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> one for you and, and one for you and one for you. Yeah. Can you do that with a city or do you have to use a city that people are going to recognize? Um, what do you think, Narelle? I think I, I like the idea of using a real city but it, and having landmarks. So you can, if you were to look, go to Google Maps and have a sticky beak, you can work out they're, they're in this part of the city because that's where that building is or that bridge is or whatever. Tell me what we're having again. What are we having? In terms a of what? No, you said you're going to have a sticky, a sticky beak. Oh, a sticky beak. <laughs> so, all right. You don't know what a sticky beak is. So a sticky beak is when you um, go and have a look at something, a quick, <laughs> go and have a quick look. So Australian slang coming out. <laughs> Thanks for I like, I like that, sticky yeah. buns. Is this anything at all similar to that? Yeah, okay. so if you were going to be an Aussie having a sticky beak <laughs> and having a look at um, what the, the geography is, it's nice to know that. And you, you, I think we're used to that with movies. So if you see a movie set in San Francisco, you see the Golden Gate Bridge. Yes. New York City, you see the Statue of Liberty or the Empire State Building or, or different things. So I think we're used to having that sort of um, 
those sort of monuments. If you look at Sydney, it's the Harbour Bridge and the Opera House. People yep. associate with it. So it's nice to have those um, aspects of a city in the story sort of to orientate yourself to it. And it's funny if you if you read a book that's set in a city that you've been to and it's like, oh, I've been there, I know where that is. That's always good. But in terms of the actual minutiae and detail, I think we've talked about this in a previous episode, that cities will change and Sydney now has a tram down George Street, which was not there when I was writing my book set in Sydney. So I think if you go to, if you drill down too much into the detail and then suddenly they redevelop a section of the city, then that's really confusing. Sure. Um, and if you want to make a completely made up city, I'd say don't do it in CCR, go write sci-fi or fantasy or okay. one of those genres where that's um, urban fantasy is probably where I'd say the um, fictional cities do their best. Okay. In the story. Right, Lindy, what, do you, what do you think? Oh, sorry. Valerie, I yeah. got you up. Um, I've always used real cities um, in, in my books for the big cities. Um, it was, uh, I think you could, you know, like Narelle said, it might be a little bit too much world building for me. Small towns are, you know, you can even draw them on a legal pad, you know, and draw the streets and stuff like that. Big cities. And I think people like um, reading about the cities they've been to. I think they like when, like Morel said, they, you run across a landmark. Um, I know in one of mine, I had the Vortex, which is a real restaurant here, and it's got this huge skull. Uh, as a, a, When you walk in, the, the entrance is this huge skull, but they're known for their tater tots, and they're the best place here. And um, people just like that. They're like, oh, I've been there. So I think it's a lot of fun when you get, especially because a lot of small towns are made up. And so, you know, you can get that when you read the small town books. But I personally, for me, I like reading the big, the big city books about a real city. Okay. Uh, Valerie? I think, I think that we've kind of touched on this already, but that real, real cities have very distinct flavors to them. Um, and I haven't been to, you know, all these places, but I'm sure that Paris has a very different vibe than Seattle, from Melbourne, from Mexico City, from just whatever. I mean, there aren't that many cities in North America that are over 5 million people, or even over 1 million, that they, they, they don't blend, like they're not the same place as each other. So yeah. while you have hundreds of thousands of small towns, so, you know, what's a few dozen more that we've made up, <laughs> um, cities really have a very strong sense of place. Yeah. And um, there, there'd just be an awful lot to make up to make it seem really, really solid. And I read a book one time that was set in, in a generic city that was never named, and it was generic. So I think that often the setting, whether it's big city, urban, or something else, that the uh, setting often kind of becomes one of the characters. And if it's generic, then it's then it's not a character. A character, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I I I tend to agree across the board. So, <laughs> all right, cool. Um, did did anybody have an extra question that they wanted to talk before we dived into actual books? I just thought I'd toss that out just in case because this was fun to sort of parse apart cities. But no, I'm getting a lot of blank faces. So <laughs> we'll just dive into. Well, I have I have just a point that I think that if someone so Charleston, I mean, I don't know if you consider it a big city, but it's a well-known city. It's, it's a city yeah. people know. So if you, you know, readers are going to have an expectation of reading a a Charleston book as opposed to a New York City book. Yes. Right. You, like that that, Val said, they each have different different things. And so I think I think that's something that attracts readers to novels is, oh, you know, I want to read. And and you like I said, you these cities are going to have different flavors yeah. based on what they are. So I think Val, that was a great point. Yeah. No, I, that's, I think that's too, true. that we we can um, have made up streets or neighborhoods or unnamed streets you know that high rise close to downtown mm -hmm. um for for setting and and making up you know the restaurant or or whatever um but still keep the whole yeah. keep the city intact <laughs> and just add a few things yeah. i do think you have to be a little careful um 
I learned the hard way <laughs> that you have to be a little careful with um, putting things in that would fit, but that are not there um, because the people who live there are going to be like, that's, that's, you can't get to the highway from there. Yes, you can see it, <laughs> but there's no way to get there. And I'm like, I know I added an exit. It's okay. <laughs> but they got very, very annoyed that I had added an exit to make it easier for the scene to happen. And I'm like, all right, fine. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. <laughs> My bad. So um, with the well-known cities, um, it's but like, you know, especially the well-known areas, the area around the, uh, the, you know, where you can see the Statue of Liberty. We all know what that park looks like. You can't change that. <laughs> right. um, or, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah. Cool. All right. So now we can move into uh, can't miss romances in urban settings. And um, we'll just jump in with Lindy. You want to go first with one? Sure. Sure. I'll go first with one. I was going to tell you, I'm going to take us on a pendulum swing from way back when okay. for my first one to one that was put out in 2021 for my second one. Oh, awesome. But um the first one I'm going to talk about is What a Girl Wants by Kristen Billerbeck. And I, it came, I read it in 2007, I think, mm -hmm. but it had already been out. And that's mm -hmm. a book that changed my life in the fact mm -hmm. of my whole writing world. I didn't know books like that existed. I mean, it could have that, you know, it's a chick lit vibe too, but it's definitely a romance for sure. And um, I read that book on a cruise and I was like, wow like this this is this is my kind of book this is my kind of read and so um it, it's in silicon valley she's a patent attorney um she has a brother who she thinks the biggest loser ever and all this well i say all she wants to do is get married but she wants a boyfriend for sure and then her loser brother who calls her bus bait all the time is actually getting married and she's like what? How can this be happening? So um, it, she has to travel to Taiwan for her job. She, um, you know, goes, I'm not going to tell the ending, but she goes through different guys that her friends set her up with or that are in her Sunday school class or whatever. When Mr. Wright is kind of there all along, but she doesn't see it, you know, and he's trying to date someone else. And I'm telling you that whole book, I don't even know how fast I read it, but I had been collecting stuff on the cruise because when I got home, I was going to make this big scrapbook and all our excursions or whatever. I had everything. When I got home, that stuff is still in my break front in my dining room. <laughs> I just started writing the, the book that would be my first published book, Her Best Catch. Um, I wrote it in 74 days and um, it didn't get bought for like three years or so. But when I sent it to my critique partners, they were like, girl, you found your voice. So um, and I, I emailed Kristen Bell Rebecca about this, you know, it's a three book series, but, um, but that book had all, it had all the urban feel, like I said, between her patent attorney job and flying to Taiwan on a moment's notice and Silicon Valley and coffee shops and restaurants after church. And it was, it was just well, can you tell I'm a little excited? So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But Kristen, <laughs> Kristen is an amazing author, and um, I've read uh, pretty much all of her books. And um, but she started that out with me on on this journey that turned out to be like my urban my urban romance journey, and um, with what a girl wants with Ashley Wilkes Stockingdale is the, <laughs> is the heroine. That's excellent. Excellent. Yeah. I love it when books stick with you that long. Like you read it a, a while ago and it um, just yeah. it stuck with you. I love that. That's cool. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right, Valerie. I think the first thing that came to my mind was um Carla Loriano's books. Her Saturday Night Supper Club series mm -hmm. is set in Denver. And to me, it has all the all the urban feels as well. Yeah. So a uh, high-paced um chef in a very busy restaurant that's being written up and reviewed in the top papers and and all that and um the guy with the uh, penthouse apartment with the big deck on top and all that good stuff yeah. that uh, you just don't really find in small towns anywhere <laughs> there's no arriving so i think she she can really be counted on to deliver um 
that city setting and most often with her it's Denver but not always because she's also done London and, and um, other places but that series for sure Saturday Night Supper Club. Yeah, yeah that's a good one. Narelle? Well, I'm going to backtrack a bit. So I loved What a Girl Wants. That was one of my favourite books as well, Lindy. I totally am with you. I read that book so fast. And that was a ha- and lots of handbags in Kristen Bellabeck's book. She likes her handbags. <laughs> if you're looking for a good handbag, go find her books. Yeah. But, and that book, I remember talking to Kristen about that ages ago. And that book did really well in Australia. And it doesn't surprise me that that book did well here and sold well. Because it's the type of story, I think, that as an Aussie that we identified with as well, that's the California your vibe is something that we're familiar with um and I also enjoyed the Carla's book the Saturday Night Supper Club and I just love the um the the rooftop um yeah. restaurant thing I thought that was amazing and also the um the nighttime food market where they, they went to dinner okay. and I think that's really very city as well so she does the urban elements well but the first book I'm going to talk about is one of Lindy's books um Uptown Harris so I went early one Saturday afternoon I picked it up and then I literally read it straight through So it's a short novella, but I didn't put it down. She got me in straight away and hooked me in and I just kept going and kept going and kept going. It's like, oh, I'm halfway through this book, really. (laughs) So, and it's first person as well. And I can be hard to hook into first person. So well done, Lindy, (laughs) for engaging me. Yes, but I really enjoyed, that was set around um, a hotel. So the heroine who's named Grace, she's a hotel heiress and she's been on this Love Atlanta reality TV show, which um, was a bit of a disaster. And as I've said before, reality TV being a disaster, I quite like. (laughs) <laughs> that whole thing works for me so um she's at this party and the waiter is the hero and he really doesn't he really has an issue with wealthy people he has an issue for a whole bunch of reasons with rich people and she pretends to be an ordinary girl and doesn't let on that she's rich so there's a lot of conflict around that in the story and she jumps on his motorbike and goes riding off with him and um, and that I think that's very much a city thing as well and just the whole sort of vibe of Atlanta because I've never been to Atlanta, so I really enjoyed seeing Atlanta through the eyes of the story characters. So that was really fun. So I need to get back into reading more of those books. (laughs) It's on my TBR. (laughs) Thank you so much, yes. And I'll I'll add, I do like the first person touch of, I think urban romances, and they don't don't have to be a chiclet vibe either. I think that first person is present in a lot and I I do like like that too. All right, so um, my first pick, um, I was going to say I'd read that book by Lindy too, but then you started describing it and that's not the one that I was thinking of. So I <laughs> I might've read it because it sounds really familiar, but I, <laughs> that's not the one that I had written down. So um, was Tony Shallows, and I'm, I'm cheating a little bit, her Faith and Fortune series because all three books are set in New York City. Um, And uh, the first book is The Trouble with Love. And there are three roommates in New York City. Um, I love, she captures, I think, New York City fairly well from a um, rich enough to afford to live in Manhattan standpoint, which is, you know, like nobody will ever probably rub elbows with, can't afford Manhattan. But um, so that's kind of fun too. And I think is some of the fun of especially New York City books is getting to see that um, they're not quite billionaire books, but they're close because, you know, if you know anything about Manhattan, you know, you know, that it's, it's not a cheap place to live. Um, And um, I also love the fact that just, you know, you get that city vibe, that city feel from the series, but they stay in their own little segment. So there's still that close contact, you know, they know people, they know the town, they, you know, and so there's the broader thing around them, but there's, it doesn't feel overwhelming. Um, So, which I like because they make the city feel accessible Mm. as opposed to, uh, you know, terrifying. (laughs) That's a good point. Yeah. Um, Yeah. All right, Lindy, do you have another one? Well, yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I'm going to piggyback on you because, Tony, that was one of my picks, too. <laughs> and so I'll swing my pendulum on the last book. But, yeah, um, yeah I liked it. Um, I liked the, um, like you said, the aspect that they were still close. Like, I still had that sense of community when I read the, the um, 
first one. Um, I haven't read the other two yet, but I read the first one. And I, I love that sense of community that was still there. And like you said, it was a side of Manhattan that most of us wouldn't see, like being able to walk to the front of the VIP line. Right. Um, my son and his wife lived in, um, they worked in Manhattan. Well, she worked in Manhattan. He worked in Chelsea, but they lived in Harlem. So when I went up to see him, I mean, you're talking fifth floor walk up with the grocery backpack we went walk to the grocery and everything was in the backpack and on the let's pull up the five flights of stairs you know thing so um yeah. it was um it was very different than that but they still she she did a great job and and uh, what she did well which i one of the things kristen did well too is they always talk about the clothes <laughs> yeah. these urban romances they always describe their clothes and i love it yeah. and how the outfits go together and um I don't know, maybe it's just the girly girl in me, but uh, but Tony did a great job with that um, in her descriptions. And, um, and even though they were, well, I guess we don't want to give away part of the book, but like Elizabeth said, it, it, it seemed like a safe place to be. And it was, it was a very, very fun book, very fun buy. And I've already started the second one. So. Yeah, the, yeah. the whole series is just delightful. Yes. All right, Narelle, do you have a second? Well, I'm glad I write a long list because everyone keeps talking about the books I had on the list. I love Tony's series in New York City as well. And so I'll add my, yes, go read that one. Yeah, um, my second one. So my second one is um, Valerie Comer's book, Joys of Juniper and her urban farm fresh romance series. And um, this particular story, this is book 11. And it's really fun because if you've read the earlier books, you get to meet the character, the main characters, the heroes and hero heroines from those books. And you get to see them with children and different things. So I really enjoy um, that particular series, the way that it's it's in Spokane, which is a medium, medium sized city. Is that how you describe Spokane in Washington state? Probably. Spokane yeah. would be yeah, a mid-sized city, although mid in, in, in the words of Elizabeth Madry, it's just a small town who thinks okay. it's bigger. Well, well, I call it a city. <laughs> so do I. So do I. <laughs> and I call it urban. <laughs> and um, yeah, so in this particular book, um, Ava is a dance teacher and she's a Santora. So she's one of the, um, she's part of the Italian um, heritage family that is one of the mainstays of this suburban part of Spokane. And they have the food forest and the hero is um, a college dropout who has made some not wise decisions in the past, who's come to faith. And he's landed with his half sisters who are younger, school age, um, because his father and stepmother have tragically passed away. So he's suddenly landed with all this responsibility and no job and no college degree, fin degree finished and um, is really looking for a fresh start. And so Ava's had a, a very specific idea about who she thinks her future husband is. And so he doesn't tick a lot of the boxes that she thinks. And it's just a really really fun story and I think I've always lived in the city or on the outskirts of a city and you can get really strong communities like a country town in an urban setting mm -hmm. so to me that's very real to life the way that um, that suburban part Bridgeview I've got the right name yeah, yeah. the way um, Valerie's created Bridge, Bridgeview to me is very real to life and I just love that series so go read all 11 okay. I think book 12 is coming out later this year <laughs> thank you so Spok Spokane is how I've always said it, which maybe okay. the Washingtonians would come at me, but um, okay. <laughs> I have no idea. I just I, I don't say know something. <laughs> I, I've never lived there, but I've always just read it as Spokane. But um, it's got a population of around 200,000. Um, yep. So for me, where I live, that's about the population of like the incorporated, like my city name that goes on my, my envelope. That's about the size, you know, as opposed to the greater suburban sprawly area in which I live. So to me, it's like, oh, that's my town. Um, but you know, it's all perspective, right? Because, but so it's just, it's still a good size. It's certainly, it's not population 5,000, you know, which is even big for some of these small town romances where it's like population 792 and then this new girl comes in town and they have to go paint that two into a three, you know? <laughs> so um, it's a matter of perspective, but I did have Valerie's, I had the whole series. I didn't pick one. I had that on my list too. <laughs> but you can go ahead and, and give the criticism of it as well. Go for it. 
I have no criticism of it. <laughs> that it's not really very urban because it focuses on a small neighborhood rather than the, the downtown core stuff. So it's it's a legit criticism. However, it is what it is. See, here's the thing, right? Like, <laughs> I didn't mean when I suggested, I had suggested at one point that Valerie could probably market it as small town because there is that feeling there of it being Bridgeview, being a small town in the middle of the city. And so I'm like, you could probably get readers who are maybe a little nervous about the Urban Farm Fresh series name. They're like, oh, I don't read Urban. You would love this if you love small town or if you love urban, either one, this one setting wise will appeal to anybody because well, it's you. not skyscrapers and taxi cabs and rush, 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 rush. It's still got that community feel, but it does have some of the bigger city issues that creep in a little bit. Um, so it was meant not to be a criticism, but a suggestion <laughs> of how to get more people to read them because they're Thank amazing. you. <laughs> Legit. And a lot, a lot of um, Bridgeview is very familiar to where I live in Canberra. So I live in probably one of the more environmentally conscious, greener parts of Australia. I think if we're not at 100% renewable energy, we're very close to that. Yeah. And so all those environmental concerns are very important to the people where I live. So we actually have mostly low rise. We don't have that many skyscrapers. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's rules around the city that you're not allowed to build a building higher than the hill that's near it so you don't have sort of that you sort of the the landscape doesn't have these protruding buildings right if that makes sense everything blends in and we've got the mountains nearby and so to me um yeah that completely works as a community that's based around a school and a church and that's kind of not that different to where I grew up and I grew up in Sydney opposite a national park area so I've used to go running in the bush or the forest as you'd call it and there was a dam down the road and so where I grew up you would never think that you were only 10 miles from the CBD in the centre of Sydney so what? there are pockets of urban areas that do have those lovely yeah. um, small town elements and yeah. so yeah well, and it's, so to me that the, makes sense. With the foodie sort of hipster foodie vibe too that you get in Bridgeview like we have an area Tacoma Park Maryland that is very much a more sort of hipster organic foodie like farmer's market everybody in the whole zip code goes to the farmer's market you know it's that's <laughs> so you know those pockets do exist um they do they do did you have a second valerie um i do i think i thought i would mention um elizabeth madry's <laughs> series which has just started kicking off so you want to be a billionaire and it's set in the dc area and there are six books total and I have been privileged to read them all even though the rest of you can't get them all yet but they're coming, <laughs> they're coming now soon. not fair not fair <laughs> well yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> but um it centers around a, a, a business a, a billionaire's business in the DC area and so everybody in all the all six books um, lives there commutes through the traffic mess works in this ginormous building um, and um, yeah. so to me that's that really part of it is that is all the tech stuff as well which uh, Elizabeth did a really super job on that lots of things in there that I didn't know but it gave me the feeling of um, of how different tech companies would work, which is not my field, but it's hers. And um, just you really get a strong sense of flavor and place in that series. So I happen to know that even though you cannot read every single one of them yet, you can pre-order them all. So go do it. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> True though, I, it, it, when I was thinking about the urban type stories that I've read, Lately, I, I just kept coming back to yours and I thought, no, the, they really just, they hit it out of the park in that area, so. Yay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, my last pick, I think is gonna be um, Heather Gray's Informal Romance series. And they're, mm -hmm. they're older, but um, they're set here in the DC area also, but you still, 
it's a very accurate representation of the area with the traffic and the little um just just the whole the vibe is there it's very much got the the dc vibe if you ever want to know what it's like to live in this area those books would tell you for sure um and it's set in a, a hospital which it, again gives you that sort of sense because it is clearly a metropolitan area the hospital as opposed to like you know the the big the big town small town where you know the doctor because he delivered three generations of your family you know <laughs> um that's it's it's not that um and i i also think the um the hospital setting is kind of unique and fun. I don't see a lot of medical setting romance. Those, those are good that way. And when we've been talking a little bit about community and the hospital gives its own community in Heather's books as well. Yeah. yeah. So, which again, I think, I think all of the books we've mentioned for urban romance, I wonder if you can generic it out. Um, that's grammatically horrible. Generalize. Generalize <laughs> is the word I was looking for there. Um, you know, do you have to probably have some way to still create that community sense in your urban setting? Um, you probably do, because I think readers do look for that. I know, I don't know that I would ever have explicitly stated oh this is missing the community feel but there have been books where I've been left feeling like it was a little flat and if I were to analyze I think that that's probably what I was missing so that seems reasonable because we want to see characters interacting with each other mm -hmm. and we like to see especially in a three or even more book series we want to get previous characters popping back in and so forth. And if they don't know each other, if there isn't uh, something that binds them together, then you're not gonna see those other characters again. So yeah, it does seem like, seems legit. Okay. Yeah. And when you're looking at TV series, if you think about the really successful TV series that are set in the city, like Friends, they had the um, cafe. <laughs> Which I've got out of my, I can't even think now. I can't even think of the name of the cafe that they have. Central Perk, Central was it? Perk. Central, Central Perk. Perk, yeah. Yep. So Friends has your New York City or Central Perk. You've got Cheers where you're at the bar. Um, and they all have that that community. It doesn't matter whether they're in, It's if you don't have those connections and those relationships and whatever, then it's it's bland. Yeah. yeah. Then you and have a bunch of standalones. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. There's no connection. Yeah. Well, we're probably, um, we're running a tiny little bit long, so we probably ought to wrap it up. <laughs> Can I say one more thing? Absolutely. Um, Elizabeth, your, um, so you want a second chance was a book I was, I was going to talk about. Um, you ticked a lot of boxes, so many boxes for me with that, with the older hero heroine, um, the, the, the second, well, re reunited, is that what it's called? You know, yeah. Yeah. Reunion romance, yeah. I guess, and um, billionaire. And I think that's a, um, kind of, I'm not saying it's in every urban romance, but I think a lot of the urban stuff also has money yeah. um, tied to it too. So um, anyway, I, I loved it. I've already pre-ordered the second one and like I okay. get them all. So i um, <laughs> super excited about that. So that was my pendulum swing was going oh. to that one that just came out, but yeah, it was so good. And, um, and lo loved the whole thing. So, and yeah. Um, and I love how the, there's all these series of these books that we can read. So that's great. And I loved it too. I read it last week. And yeah. I love the meet cute in that in terms yeah. of the, the hero who has his heart attack and he, he meets her because she's a cardiac surgeon. And I also, the other thing I like is the cars, like not having to drive and park and having a chauffeur picking you up. It's like, <laughs> yes. And the private jet, although she didn't get to go in the private jet in the first book, so I was mildly disappointed. So there, but that's there's okay. More, there's more jet <laughs> further on. <in> the <laughs> but you definitely won me over with the cars, the whole concept yeah. of him sending a car around to collect her and not having to deal with city traffic and parking and whatever. That was really nice. I know and then Norel what about having a car to come collect you from the hospital can get you in trouble yeah. I know <laughs> like 
<laughs> like, rat, are you kidding? I'm going to get in trouble because a car's coming. <laughs> Small town hospital gossip. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. There's that community we're, yeah. we're talking about. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, all right. So final, final thoughts. Are we good? Probably final thought wise. Anything? Yeah, they're just like to say. Probably just love them. Are great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I could talk about Liz Johnson's book set in Savannah and Leslie Ann McDaniel set in Seattle. And yeah. there's, there's mm -hmm. so many that we didn't even really have a chance to touch on. No. So if it's think, something that you're interested in in urban settings, there's there's quite a lot. Well, Although I have to say, I think small towns probably outnumber big cities, yes. both in the real world and in the um, book world. Books. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But for you sure. Can I think does Lee, one, does Lee Won Ho have one in San Francisco or something? She does. Yeah. Uh, she, yes. was, she was on my list as well. I didn't okay. write down yes. which, which books, but there are... Um, I feel yeah, like her several. tropical Ta taking series. chances, I think, series. Yeah. So well, her, her, her the tropical, tropical one the is tropical Hawaii. Ones. Hawaii. Well, the, one of them is in Silicon Valley, I believe. They all feel very, I think, California City. They they oh, tend mm -hmm. to have that California City vibe, even if it's not specific. This is exactly here. Um, there's still that vibe. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Lindy, thank you very, very much for joining us again. Yeah. Remind thank you for having everyone, me. <laughs> remind everyone where we can find your books. Give us your website. Um, website is Lindy with L I N D I Peterson S O N dot com. Perfect. And then I am on Insta, Facebook, and Twitter. Excellent. All right. And um, if you're listening or watching, we'd love to hear from you. You can leave us a comment either on the Story Chats Facebook page or um, on YouTube directly under, under the episode. There's a place where you can put a comment. We always answer. Um, let us know what we missed, what your favorite urban CCR is, what you're looking at, looking for in an urban CCR. We'd love to know that. Um, yes. Any of those things. Talk to us about urban CCR. And... Um, other than that, just thank you for joining us at Story Chats. You can find information about the podcast at inspiromance.com slash story chats. And um, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you are watching on YouTube so you never miss an episode. We will see you next week. And in the meantime, don't forget to fall in love with a good book. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone.